In November of 2023, the Icelandic town of Grindavik experienced an earthquake that left massive cracks in the earth. This was the beginning of a chain reaction that culminated in a catastrophic volcanic eruption, one that sent fountains of lava 300 feet into the sky. This would be the third eruption the area has experienced since 2021, after centuries of low seismic activity. Join us as we give you all the facts about Iceland's seismic crisis and how the splitting of Grindavik was just the first sign of the destruction to come. Located on Iceland's southwestern coast, Grindavik is a tiny fishing town with a population of just 3,600. This made it a largely peaceful locale. But all of that changed on October 24, 2023, when the inhabitants felt the first of many earthquakes. The Iceland Meteorological Office, or IMO for short, recorded around 8,000 earthquakes over the next week, most of which occurred around two miles underground. When they discovered the source of the seismic activity, they began to realize just how serious things were. Not far to the north of the seaside settlement lies Eldvörp Svartsengi, a volcanic system that had lain dormant for hundreds of years. This long period of inactivity ended in 2020 when the system started showing signs of reawakening. Three years later, it became one of many volcanoes that erupted across Iceland. These earthquakes were where it all began. On November 10th, the IMO recorded an earthquake that reached 5.3 on the Richter scale. 22,000 earthquakes had been recorded by this time. The pressure was building, and it seemed only a matter of time before the Earth tried to swallow Iceland whole. While all of this was happening, the ground beneath Grindavik started to come apart. The town had been built on top of a lava field created 2,350 years ago by a volcanic field named Sundnukur. In other words, Grindavik lay in the literal crater of a volcano. Everything from its harbor to its location had been shaped by its eruptions. And now, it seemed like Sundanukur would destroy what it had built. Magma had begun to ooze into the dikes beneath the crater, which sent ripples through the surface. The cracks this created released boiling hot steam, a clear representation of the pressure cooker-like conditions below. Officials declared a state of emergency, Grindavik was evacuated, and everyone waited anxiously to find out what came next. In the nearby area of Svartsengi, the ground began to rise and descend as the pressure continued to mount. Four days after the strongest earthquake, IMO equipment started to detect sulfur dioxide in the air. This meant that the magma was getting ever closer, and officials expected an eruption to happen any day. Even so, the awaited explosion didn't arrive, or at least, it took longer to occur than most officials thought. The ice-cold earth had frozen around 90% of the magma in its tracks, according to some experts. Seismic activity began to wind down, and for a moment, seemed like a crisis had been averted. The Blue Lagoon Geothermal Spa, located three miles from Grindavik, went so far as to reopen on December 17th. They believed that the worst was over. Little did they know. Everything was about to come crashing down quite literally the next day. The magma near Sundanukur itself was still blazing hot. All it needed was just a bit more pressure, and the whole thing would blow sky high. By the start of December, GPS data showed that the ground was now higher than it was prior to the earthquakes. This was the result of magma buildup, and it turned out that the 5.3 magnitude earthquake of November 10th had sent the molten rock into much less secure reservoirs. At Svartsengi, began to seep into the dikes below just as it did in Grindavik. If the ground managed to cool it down, an eruption could be avoided once again. However, Iceland didn't get so lucky a second time. During this tense wait, the power station in the area had been evacuated as well. Personnel at the Reykjans geothermal station were operating it remotely, allowing for an uninterrupted supply of energy. However, the remote operation simply couldn't provide a critical utility to the local area, hot water. While the surroundings were largely vacant at this time, Sooner or later, all of these temporary refugees would have to come home. So this was a temporary solution at best. The main problem here was that the power station was extremely vulnerable to a potential eruption. If a lava field ended up coming its way, 7% of Iceland's population would be left without electricity. In the frigid climate near the Arctic Circle, that would essentially be a death sentence for tens of thousands of residents who rely on electric heating to survive. Anticipating an eruption, authorities had set up barriers around Grindavik and other strategic areas. Of course, these barriers would only be able to do so much to keep molten lava at bay. If the area was going to make it through, an eruption simply couldn't happen. 
but the magma below the surface had passed the point of no return. All that was left to do was burst out of a fissure rapidly opening up in Sundnukur. Over two miles of earth started to split at the seams, creating a deep fissure containing magma just a few dozen feet below. All of the pressure forced the molten liquid into the gaps beneath a mountain called Hagafell, which turned out to be the weakest point in the fissure. At 10.17 p.m. on December 18th, nearly two months after thousands of earthquakes raised alarm bells at the IMO, Hagafell became the site of the long-awaited eruption. Fountains of lava exploded out of the ground, sending out columns of molten rock that reached a height of 300 feet before returning to the ground in a fiery rain. With the earth finally opening up, the magma began to flow out at a rate of nearly 200 cubic meters per second. The eruption was so massive that the magma columns could be seen from the capital city of Reykjavik over 25 miles away. Pandemonium erupted at Keflavik Airport, the largest in the country, as flights were indefinitely delayed. The Blue Lagoon Spa, reopened just a day prior, had to hastily shut back down. As the country came to grips with what had just happened, the IMO grew extremely concerned about the direction of the lava flow. The Icelandic Coast Guard sent a helicopter to take a closer look, which confirmed what everyone was fearing. The MAGA was flowing irrefutably and inexorably towards Grindavik. That meant the potential destruction of not just that town, but also of the Svartsengi power plant located just miles away. A sizable chunk of the country was at risk of losing access to electricity for an indeterminable amount of time. And then, the next day, people started smelling smoke and ash nearly 20 miles away from the eruption site. This led to fears that toxic volcanic gases might end up reaching Reykjavik in 24 hours. This was a national crisis, one that had brought the entire country to a standstill. And there was simply nothing anyone could do as the crack formed in the ground near Hagafell spewed out hellfire. Another major concern was the prospect of further eruptions. Volcanic activity is an enormous geological process. It never happens in isolation, rather it usually forms a pattern. And if the pattern is anything like what we saw in Iceland, it could make the entire area uninhabitable. However, on December 21st, the situation started to seem like it was changing for the better. The IMO announced that the eruption site was no longer spewing fresh lava. The evacuees of Grindavik took this as a sign. It was time to go back home. The IMO said it was too early to say the eruption was over. Officials repeatedly warned them against returning. And yet, despite everything, the inhabitants of Grindavik slowly but surely began to trickle back. Forty of them celebrated Christmas and New Year's in the comfort of their own homes, while an ocean of fire marched towards them. On January 2nd, the government installed additional barriers to secure Grindavik. This would keep the slowly approaching lava field at bay, and there was a chance that it would cool before reaching the town. For just a moment, it seemed like everything would get back to normal. Unfortunately, the IMO's warnings turned out to be prophetic. At around the same time that the barriers were being reinforced, GPS data started showing the same patterns that occurred right before the Hagafell eruption. Based on the latest reports, another volcanic eruption might be right around the corner. Luckily, it appears that the highest level of seismic activity isn't as close to Grindavik as the last time around. The IMO says that the magma would take several days to reach the surface, if it rises that high at all. Of course, all predictions tend to go out the window when a long, dormant volcano erupts three times in two years. What's your opinion, though? Let us know in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos just like this.